Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the WordPress community and podcast connecting people with the products, lessons, and strategies to help push their business forward. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my good buddy and co-host, Matt Siebert from Paria Strategic Design. How's it going today, Matt? It's going pretty well. Um, as you can see, actually, I have a, a legitimate office now. Things are starting to come together. Uh, I've had a lot of free time over the weekends, not seeing friends or going anywhere or doing anything. So I'm taking that time to uh, to really focus on making uh, just the, the quality life improvements that otherwise would go un, uh, undone. I don't even know what free time is. I feel like there's something for me to do every moment of the day and then some. You've also got a much larger family in the house than I do. I do. I do. The kids will fill up any free time you think you want to have. In fact, <clears throat> I usually will like put my headphones on and watch something just to zone out for a few because that's about the only way somebody will leave me alone for a little bit. So that's that. That is. Well, to Today, we want to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the idea behind this is kind of spring cleaning, right? So this is kind of the time of the year people start cleaning, sprucing things up. I went out and bought mulch uh, a couple weeks ago that I still haven't put out in the yard, but the bags are here uh, so we could clean up the yard. Uh, and I think just kind of this time of the year brings that to us uh, and, and gets us wanting to do that. But this year has been obviously quite a bit different with uh, coronavirus and pandemics and people staying at home. And it feels like, you know, everything's become kind of an emergency. Even the slightest little client request has become an emergency. And I've spent quite a bit of time, especially like 2019 was, was my year to get like processes down, organization, get things really streamlined for my business. Cause I felt like I had put enough of it into practice that I could be able to like start writing things down as like, this is my system now, you know, after some trial and error. But what I realized is, you know, when, when all this coronavirus stuff happened and, and they eventually got to orders to shut businesses down and stuff here in Texas, I realized a lot of the things that I didn't yet have uh, cleaned and organized and processes for. And it's like all this, shined a big spotlight on it. So I was kind of thinking of this as, you know, uh, some people have really messy desks with things piled all over them and stacks of paper and books and knickknacks and you name it, right? Or then you look at Matt's desk, look at that desk. There's like a plant, a phone, uh, uh, a stapler. Dude, if that, it's a swing line, but uh, it's not red. I need to find one of those. You do, but that's a super organized desk. And I feel like, you know, this kind of analogy works in the fact that if I had this messy desk with stuff all over it and somebody frantically ran in my office and said, hey, find that exact one piece of paper I need from you. I'd be scrambling everywhere, trying to dig through everything, trying to find that. But when you're real nice and organized, even if the other person's in a panic, you can just zen, find what you need, hand it to them and you're good. And that's kind of happened in a lot of people's businesses, not just ours, is when all this happened, I don't think anybody had really prepared for uh, what what happens if we can't go to work anymore? Uh, that wasn't something that was like on everybody's preparedness plan. Uh, but the more organized and cl you know streamlined and the cleaner your desk was for all this, that it made that transition that much easier, right? So I think during all this, I've noticed that some things I I thought I had in place well enough, I was kind of ignoring, and all of this has shined a spotlight on those things. It's made all those things shine bright. So uh, I've been going back and forth with Matt about a lot of the things I've been kind of implementing and working on and trying to tweak and get cleaned up and nice. And some of them are really simple and some of them are a little bit more in depth, but I thought we could spend a little bit of time here today um, kind of discussing all those things and hopefully sparking some ideas for some people. So uh, how does all that strike you, Matt? Yeah, for sure. I think that uh, organization like in general is always super important. I mean, I definitely have a, uh, a bit of like maybe a touch of OCD when it comes to, to that stuff. Like, you know, if something's like angled the right the, the wrong way on my desk, like I, I have to fix it. <clears throat> um, and that's why you're single. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> that, among many, many other reasons that I don't think we have time to get into right now. That's, a, that's an episode all in itself. 
Um, but just like quality of life things too. And things that you can do, you know, we're in, we're in lockdown. We can't go places. We can't do things. And you know, that, that alone, like really disrupts what you're used to doing. And if you're, if you're, if you're not doing like, I mean, a lot of people like kind of work on a, on a schedule, on a, on a routine. And when that routine is broken, it's, it's sometimes really difficult to, to get back into that routine or figure out, you know, okay, so I can't go to the office to do this, or I can't go to a, like a workspace to do that. Like, how do I bring a little bit of that back into this, this whole new, you know, world that we're, uh, we're currently living in? Yeah, I think that's, that's very true. And, and it's not only your own routine, it's now other people who are in your spaces routine, you know, so there's other people that I'm used to like kids leaving for school for the day or wife going to work. And those things are all different now too. So let's dive into a few of these things. Uh, the first one that I noticed right away when, when all this kind of happened and, and I felt like I needed to reach out to all my customers and, you know, address this whole thing somehow, not only to, you know, make sure I'm top of mind with them, but to check on them and stuff. Um, I opened up my email marketing when I was using for my agency, uh, MailChimp or excuse me, uh, Mailer Light. And I went in there to email all my customers and I, I've posted all of my funnels and stuff on my website and and took in a bunch of junk leads and I've never taken the time to clean all that out. So actually just being able to go in there and click my customers and then send an email to all of them at once was nearly impossible to do immediately. Like I had to spend time going through the list and kind of organizing things uh, to be able to put this, this initial email out, right. And kind of create a list uh, based on that. And what's annoying about that and, and why I kind of bring that up is, is when all this happened, I'm like, Hey, I have an idea. This is what I want to send out to my people. There was no way for me to just jump in and do it because even though I had implemented some email marketing and I had some kind of organization in the list, it was never done completely. Uh, so what I ended up doing, and I shared in the group a little bit that I've been playing with, uh, with convert kit, um, and, and I really like it so far, but what I ended up doing was just going through my email or all my customer list, which I have somewhere completely else in Airtable, um, going through the customer list and just starting a completely new email list and convert kit, uh, that just started with my customers, tagged all of them as customers. If they were in my care plan, they were tagged that way. If they were, uh, you know, just different kind of types of customers within there. But so it was really easy. And I was thinking of this kind of like through this lens of if, if something happens and I need to jump in and email a certain group of customers, how can I do that easily? So I think spending some time on that here recently and, and doing it in convert has been a whole lot nicer for me too. Uh, I've enjoyed that, but really that was something that I've kind of, kind of half ignored for a long time uh, that I wish I wouldn't have. And I know you don't really do any kind of email marketing stuff. So how did, I know you reached out to customers though. So how did you kind of handle those things? Um, I mean, typically the, the people that I'm going to reach out to are the ones that I'm in, you know, fairly consistent contact with anyway. So, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's a, it's a smaller group of clients. Um, so it's kind of easy just to go in and, and write those emails uh, and, and just kind of do it manually. It didn't take that long. And that's, uh, that's kind of the way that I move forward with that. Um, you know, and then I, I have my, uh, my care plan folks, which I do have in a list. Um, so that, you know, if there's anything that needs to go out to, to those folks, I do have that set up. Um, but for anything else, you know, it's, it's fairly simple for me to, to just go in and draft a couple of emails and, and shoot them out. Yeah. And I think my deal was, is there's, I'm looking, I just pulled up my, my list right now. I have 32 emails, uh, set in for my care plan customers. Now it's a little deceiving because a couple of those, there's multiple contacts for a single company. And then some of them it's one customer and several care plans. So, uh, it's not exactly the amount of care plans I had, but I wanted to be really careful about, um, making sure I sent a consistent message to everybody, at least at first that I could really keep things straight because I wanted to, I wanted to do some things to offer, um, you know, 
if we need to do updates for the website, I'm not going to count that against your, you know, your allotted amount of time this month and things like that, uh, that I could put up some kind of notice and, and me actually recommending they put up some kind of notice on their website, even if they're still operating as normal. Um, so I think it was an easy way for me to be able to do that really consistently and then kind of have those individual conversations as people replied, because I would say about 50% of them replied to those first couple emails I sent out, you know, regarding COVID stuff. And probably pretty Uh, quickly too. Yeah, pretty quickly. And a lot of them were, uh, were hair on fire type things. So the next one I wanted to talk about was something that we actually brought up. Uh, We had Hannah Smith on a few weeks back talking about how green your website is. And and one of the things she brought up doing was like bookmarking all the sites you go to all the time because it saves you from like having to go to Google or just searching in the Omni bar for it and then clicking a link or whatever. Um, And my bookmarks were a total mess. Uh, So I spent a bunch of time the other day actually going through and making a a bunch of folders and kind of segmenting everything out in folders and then bookmarking uh, a lot of the applications and things I use. Uh, For instance, one that I... One that I noticed was always a pain in the butt when I go to log into Cloudways in case I need to do something in my hosting. I just go to cloudways.com and I press the login button, which actually takes me to like, I forget, uh, app or platform.cloudways. It takes me to the subdomain and then I log in there. And it's just like an extra step every time that was driving me nuts. So I've actually gone through to, to pretty much everything I use on a daily or weekly basis and bookmarked the actual URL of where I need to like start. So most of the time that's like on a login screen or something. Right, I Um, actually did that by mistake on uh, my accounting software. And yeah, like now that you mention it, being able to just click that and immediately being like in that particular space within that software from the get go, because that's really, you know, if I'm sending out invoices, that's where I want to be. I don't want to be at their homepage and then have to navigate all the way there. Like that's just, that's killing time for sure. Yeah. And it seems like such like little things, but I can tell you like just browsing the internet now has become easier because all of these things are very organized and right at my fingertips. Now it did take me a couple of days to stop going in and typing in these URLs rather, or, you know, just searching for it or whatever, just kind of like retrain my brain. Yeah, it's a new and habit been, to build. Yeah. And I, I've been having to go through and add to a lot of it just as I realize, Oh, I didn't think about putting this in here. Um, but that's been super helpful uh, and something I wish I did a long time ago. And you were actually showing me some things you did with, uh, you use rain meter on your computer, which isn't something I use, but tell, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, I'm a customization freak and I usually spend far too long looking for wallpapers and, and making my desktop look pretty and organized. And there it is again, that whole organizational thing. But, you know, I, I figure I'm, I'm sitting at my desk staring at the screen for eight plus hours a day. I, uh, I want to make my space look comfortable or like be comfortable for me. Um, rain meter allows you to do a bunch of cool things. Um, primarily I use it to, uh, to monitor like, you know, my, my CPU, my Ram, like all of those usages. Um, they're just like little widgets that stick to the, uh, to the desktop. There's a bunch of different, uh, layouts and, and cool like designs that you can, uh, you can download for it. Uh, most of them do pretty much the same things. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but if I like minimize this and Kyle, if you talk, I, I believe that you're going to be able to see like, you know, a little, like a little bit of something. Yeah, we were actually here. playing with this earlier. Yeah, you can see the, the audio coming through over there, which is kind of neat. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that we're going to, you're going to have to talk over me maybe. I don't, because the uh, the screen is switching to whoever's talking. So <laughs> I guess that was uh, that wasn't really, th- oh, there it goes. There, that was that. a terrible mistake, wasn't it? Yep. But uh, <laughs> anywho, Rain Meter, uh, I did find one that's that's pretty pretty cool. It's um, it's called uh, let me see, Drop Top, and there's a free version, and there's also a uh, like a donationware type of type of thing. I think it, they ask for like five bucks. I think it's totally worth it. It adds a uh, like a Mac type OS bar to the top. Where you have all the uh, the computer, you know, like shortcuts that you would uh, you would normally find on a toolbar, um, so like power options, volume options, all of that stuff. But there's a lot more that's uh, that's there. The the few that uh, that now that I've got it, I, I feel like oh man, how did I live without this? 
you can actually put shortcuts to folders uh, right there. So I have one for my plugins, one for my uh, my open projects. <clears throat> so when I need an asset and I'm working on you know a website or a print material in in InDesign or something, and I need you know say a logo, I can actually go to the top of my screen now, click uh, that particular folder and immediately be where I need to be and snag that asset and actually drop it from that uh, that drop down right into the program that I'm working from. Um, that's That's been really, really freaking cool. Um, and then let's see, what else do they have? They have a, uh, a quick copy paste uh, little drop down bar too. So all those like, you know, M dashes and bullet points and all that stuff that I don't have uh, memorized, like what key combinations make what. Uh, they've got literally all of them right there, so you can quick search for what you need, copy it right from that toolbar, and then keep on doing what you're doing. So it's really like a, a quality of life type of uh, type of thing, and you know, it's not just Drop Top that uh, that Rain Major has; it's a whole bunch of things. Um, and there's there's definitely styles for everybody out there. Like somebody that wants something like really clean and minimal, all the way to make your uh, your desktop look just like Jarvis from Iron Man. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's pretty cool. It's a, I would check it out. We'll, we'll make sure we drop links in all these notes for the stuff we're mentioning here. Uh, I, I don't even think that's an affiliate link, so you're safe on that one. <laughs> no, uh, Rain Meter, to the best of my knowledge, is completely free. Nice. All right, so the other thing, and kind of speaking of programs that I've done is, let's see, two days ago, I've lost track of time, man. I swear, I never know what day it is anymore. Yeah, I thought um, it was like Wednesday yesterday. I think it was Wednesday yesterday. Was it? See, yeah. there you go. Like yeah. point proven. Amazing. So I went through uh, some day in the past and uh, uninstalled every program on my computer that I'm not currently like using on a regular basis. Um, I figured if I needed them in the future, I could reinstall them. But uh, my computer is getting to the point now where it's it's probably needing to get replaced, but now it's probably not a great time for me to spend extra money on a computer. Um, so I went through and I probably ended up uninstalling, I would say 15 to 20 applications from my computer. Uh, and I've noticed a difference just from doing that. And it's, it's nothing but laziness that has just left them there. You know, I downloaded it and, and used it for some period of time and kind of abandoned it and just never messed with it. Um, but even just getting like that little bit of performance back on my computer has made things easier. You know, it makes me feel more productive. Yeah, for sure. Um, can I ask how, uh, how you went about deleting those? Uh, I was using, uh, C cleaner. There it is. Yeah. It's, uh, something you actually installed on my computer while you were here in Texas. Uh, and so I, I ran a cleanup or whatever with that thing. I don't understand it completely, but, uh, I went through and uninstalled all the programs using that. Yeah, the the benefit of uh, uninstalling programs using uh, CCleaner rather than just going in and, and deleting the files or uh, uninstalling it through their own un uninstaller methods um, is that it actually clears out like everything associated with that. So that's something to take in mind when you are deleting or uh, uninstalling things using it is that it's going to get rid of all of it. So even those uh, those you know digital dust files that most uninstallers will leave just in case you ever install something in like maybe your save states or your you know your options or those, those files are still there <clears throat> yeah i did with i had a lot i have a creative cloud subscription and so i had a bunch of applications that i wasn't using from adobe uh, but i did save all the preferences on those just in case i decide to open those ones again something else that uh, you might want to take a look at with ccleaner is your uh, your startup options yeah i did go through um, that like, too yeah, like really like take take into account like what's starting up when your computer does and if you even need it and uh, just shut all of that stuff off. It's going to make your boot times uh, quicker and, you know, you're not going to have all these like ridiculous background processes uh, that you don't need running while your computer's on that just automatically start when it starts. Yeah, and I had a bunch of them. I had uh, Station, like 
uh, to do, you know, all the apps and stuff all in one thing. I had that coming up on startup, but probably have, I tested it probably six months ago and haven't used it since. But every time I restart my computer, it was starting up and I would just close it. I think audacity to like edit, uh, audio that was starting up for some strange reason, even though it's so rare, I ever opened that program, but just like laziness, I just left it all there, you know? So it feels good to have all those things cleaned out. And at least my computer is running a little bit better at this point for sure um something else uh that we could talk about would be you know it's something that i've mentioned in the past but just a quality of life or like bringing back some semblance of uh of that you know routine that you're used to is in the morning like you don't have to actually go anywhere um but what i do is i i hop in the car and i'll drive for 15 20 minutes in a random direction i usually have like a couple of loops that i do but, um, you know, I'll, I'll make my morning coffee, I'll throw it into a mug, I'll hop in my car and I'll drive to work. Um, but that 20 minutes, you know, kind of gets you into that frame of mind of, all right, I'm going to work. Like when I get back to the, uh, the house or apartment or wherever you're going, um, you're now at work and like your, your brain kind of shifts into that mode. Um, and I've actually seen a lot of people talking like both in, uh, in the group and like, you know, on Reddit and stuff that people are discovering that this is something that, that they've started to do as well. Um, which is kind of neat and kind of reinforces like, yeah, it's, it's not a bad idea to, uh, to get out and go to work. Yeah. I can see the benefit to doing that. Um, I'm not in a, with all the kids and stuff. It's hard to like, I'm just going to get up and leave the house. Like you don't get to do anything you want to do anymore. Um, but, um, I think one of the things I hated most about my job was my 45 minute drive to work and home every day. I just would think like the entire time, like an hour and 30 minutes of my day is completely wasted uh, sitting in this car, driving to work. So now the fact that I don't have to do that is one of my favorite things. So, uh, while I see the, the benefit in it, it's not for me. Yeah. And I definitely think that it, it really depends on how your mind works. Um, like me, like I really need to, uh, to focus, um, and like get into those different, uh, those different mindsets. You know, if I was just to get up, make a coffee and come into the office, I would just sit at, a, at the screen and just stare at things like wondering what I should do, like scroll on of, Facebook for an hour. Right. Exactly. Like part of what my, uh, what, what my mind is doing, I'll listen to a podcast or something, but as I'm driving around and, and especially like once I hit that, that, uh, that like peak where I'm starting to go back home, um, that's when my brain starts like kind of categorizing like, okay, this is what you've got to do today. This is like, you know, the, the, order of operations to get there um so by the time i'm back i kind of have a game plan set up and i can just sit down and start working yeah and and kind of on that same vein uh i'm not much of a pencil and paper type person i really i could probably eliminate paper from my life completely and be fine with that um and i like to use all the the tools and stuff, but I've started to uh, use my field notes, get over my uh, not wanting to write in them because they're so cool. And now my kid, I don't know if the, yeah, she's drawn all over this one. So it's extra fancy now. Um, but I've started in the morning um, kind of writing out my goals for the day. And it's not so much specific tasks always. Uh, sometimes it is. Sometimes it's specific customer things I need to get done. But uh, sometimes it's just kind of goal oriented for the day. Um, and I just leave room to put a check mark next to it kind of throughout the day. So anytime I feel like I'm, you know, I finish a task and there's like this time between when you're done with one task and you start another, it's when you have like kind of an opportunity to, uh, be unproductive for a while. So usually I'll try to fill any of that time, um, with something out of that, out of this book, something that I want to accomplish for the day. And a lot of that here recently has been like organizational type things. Uh, but that's been super helpful. And I've just, what I like about the field notes, um, is just being able to throw this in my pocket. So I've just gotten the habit of this kind of being like my, my wallet or my phone that is just always with me. So, uh, the other day I had to run to home Depot to pick up some things and I wrote it in here. So everything's kind of gone in here and gone with me. Uh, cause I can't think of, you know, so many times I think of something while I'm not at the desk. Um, and I'm even lazy about typing in my phone. So that's been 
been helpful to actually have to slow down and like write things down and have them them here with me all the time and everywhere I go. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I'm I've always been the exact opposite of that. Like I know that you're you're like huge into um, you know like the, the online task management systems and and all of that, which. I've tried every single one of them and I tell you like nothing works better for me than a single sheet of paper that has the day's to-do list. Um, usually the way I do it is I've got a, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it right now. <clears throat> I, uh, I've got the, the client name, uh, like a dash and what needs to be done for them. And then that just kind of goes down. It's also got the, uh, you know, the other things that I need to do. And then at the very bottom of the page, I have uh, a section waiting on. So I've got, you know, some things that are out to proof and, and all of that, like what I'm waiting uh, on for clients to, to get back to me. And throughout the day, like as I, as I do these things, um, I physically cross them out. And one, that feels really good to, to actually take a pen to the paper and, and cross it out saying like, this is done. Um, rather than going into an online thing and just clicking a, a checkbox like that, that doesn't really work for me. Um, but at the end of the day, as I'm wrapping up, the, one of the last things that I'll do is take a clean sheet of paper, copy down the things that I didn't get to or still have things to do. Um, so everything is kind of out of my mind at that point and it's written down. I don't have to think about it, you know, five, six, however late I work comes around, I can get up from my desk and then go enter normal life and not have to think about these things, which that if, if I, if I didn't do that, I would be thinking about work constantly and always because that's the way that I work. Um, so this doing it this way allows me to get it out of my head onto paper. I know that it's, it's set waiting for me that for the next day and I can forget about it until then. It's kind of like the same principle when we, you know, when we talk to Nathan Ingram about the Friday email thing, right? Where you send all your clients kind of an update of what's gone on this week and what you're going to do next week. And part of that, part of doing that is just the exercise of kind of getting it all out of you, putting it away. And now I can relax and go on to my weekend without thinking about it. So you're kind of doing that every day in a way, you know? Right, exactly. And, you know, I, I think that's, it, uh, like that, the habit or the, the act of actually writing something down, like it, um, it supposedly instills it in your head a little bit more too. Like they say that like when you're studying, for example, um, to actually physically write down notes, uh, like helps you retain that more. So I think that, you know, that coupled with my morning drive. So the, the previous night I'll write everything down. It's in my head. I know it it's down. I don't, you know, if I do forget about it, that's fine. It's right there. But then that next morning, because I did write it down the night previous, I'm able to go through that list in my head. And then when I sit down, I already have like a, like a, an outline of what I need to do. And then it's staring me in the face. Yeah. No, I'm, I might need to adopt some of that. Cause usually I'm just fed up by the time I quit for the day. It's just like, all right, I'm done. I'm done. And I close everything down and walk out of my office <laughs> right, and, right. and kind of emerge back the next day. And the, and one last thing I definitely wanted to get to is something that, uh, as, as all this stuff happened and as life began to change for everyone here, um, I started being, I started like relaxing on some of my procedures. So one thing I've been really, really consistent about for a while now is any of my customers, if they want to call me or zoom or, or anything other than email, I just ask them to book it in my calendar. So I have booking links They're in my email signature. My customers know where to find them. Uh, I send them out to people if they want to chat. I try to do everything to that booking calendar because everything goes into Google calendars and I can keep everything straight and organized and kind of all, as all this was happening, I started realizing I was telling people, you know, uh, just give me a shout or, uh, you know, shoot me a text when you want to jump on a Zoom or, you know, just being really relaxed with it. Uh, and I started kind of getting out of that habit of making sure everything was scheduled ahead of time. Uh, one other thing about scheduling those things ahead of time is I have basically like a an eight hour period. Like if, if I gave you my link to book right now, the soonest you could book is eight hours from now. Um, even if I had an open slot in 30 minutes. So this way it kind of pushes things out a little bit and it keeps my workflow a little bit more even. Um, but because I got out of that, I started just kind of jumping in and out of calls and jumping in and out of Zoom meetings. And it got kind of chaotic uh, to the point that the other day um, I had a meeting with somebody, somebody that's actually in our group. Um, and we 
they did schedule the meeting, but because I'd been so out of routine at looking at my schedule and doing all that, I completely spaced on the meeting, didn't show up to it, you know, kind of no showed them to the own, my own meeting with them, uh, and, and felt really terrible about it. So I, I actually made that my goal, um, is to get back on making sure that everything is going through the booking calendar, uh, because forgetting your processes when things are chaotic is, is super counterproductive for sure. And I can also see that there's a, a potential chance of, uh, of like retraining your clients, uh, in a, in a negative way, uh, to just text you whenever, because you're just available, um, because things will go back to normal. And once they do that, probably can't happen anymore right so you know like definitely keep your keep your clients trained in the way that uh, you want to, to interact with them yeah and so i've been doing better this week has been good everything's been scheduled uh, i even had somebody that wanted to jump on a call the same day and I, I didn't do it i made them schedule through my my calendar so sorry folks if you are one of those people <laughs> just realized one of those people is also in the group so you're hearing my secrets now all right. Well, you got anything else to add to this, Matt? Uh, yeah, actually. Well, not to add, but to ask. Um, I like we we kind of just touched on a couple of the things that we do, like you know, productivity, organizational wise. But I'm really curious what everybody out there has to uh, has to say. Like, what processes uh, have you seen like change since all of this happened? What process have you have you started? Um, and what what like software do you use or what, like how many people out there do the, the pen and pencil thing? Um, I'm really curious mainly because I'm probably missing a bunch of, uh, like really cool things that I could be doing. So if anybody has anything that really like works really well for themselves, leave a comment because, uh, I'm always up to, uh, to change my routine a little bit. Yeah, no doubt. And this would be a good one. Uh, next happy hour is a non, um, we're not having a guest or anything. It's just an open discussion. Uh, it's May 14th at 11 Eastern. Um, so what's that? Four o'clock in the UK, something-ish. I'm guessing that's about right. Anyways, this would be a good uh, good thing for us to discuss on there too. If people have some ideas and topics, uh, this would be a good good thing for us to chat about on there. So if you're, if you're not uh, part of the happy hour calls, you can go to the admin bar dot com forward slash happy hyphen hour and register there to be a happy hour VIP so that you can get all the emails and links to everything and replays and all of that. But yes, I'm, I'm interested too. I know the best system in the world is the system that works for you. You know, uh, no matter how many tools and different things there are out there, I like to use a lot of online things. You like to write things on a pen, you know, with pen and paper, uh, neither one of those are right or wrong. It's just whatever works best for you. Right. Awesome, guys. Well, I appreciate everybody listening today. Uh, we'll make sure there's a thread about this in the group. So if you want to drop some of your comments in there, we'd greatly appreciate it. So if uh, if we can do anything to help make you guys more productive or share any more details about the things we talked about, we'd be glad to do that too. And if you'd like to help us, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to our podcast and YouTube channel, share our content, and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly helps support the show. We'll catch you all on the next one. Bye-bye.